Hi everyone, this is Altiplano and I'm Simon and I'm looking forward to telling you about this game. It's by Ryanair Stockhausen and I'm going to open the box and show that it has a lot of stuff in here. Will we need all of it? Uh, yes, for the most part. The reason why there's so much stuff is it does include, as per the description, it's going to have in it the Traveller, which is the big expansion. It has the mini expansion, which is called Sunny Days. It also has a promo which came with the Deutsche Spiel Prix box for 2018. And um, the sh you may have well seen that because I did the unboxing for that. At the time of recording, had 120 views. So we're going to need all this stuff out. And uh, there's obviously a lot of stuff. I'm just going to show you one player board because the rest of it can stay in here. And I think that's all that we need to take out of the box right now. So these bags you may have seen in the game uh, Azul, because I did uh, film that, because it did come with an extra bag, I believe, which is really handy. Just checking, I've got yeah, four spare. So that is how you set the game back in its box if you happen to destroy or get rid of your other box. So I'll put that out of the way. So this does take about 15 to 20 minutes to set up, but I'm gonna try and do it as swiftly as I can with not having to get all the pieces out. This is the Traveller board. You will not see this in the base game. Now we're just going to chuck stuff around the edges. Now what I'm doing here is just laying these out as such. So they're done at random. There are other games I'll be showing you, such as Crown of Mara, which are also done at random. But in this instance, uh, what it's showing us is basically places we can go. So what is Altiplano about? Altiplano is all about being in the Andes and we're looking to trade goods. Now, Rhino Stockhausen and DLP Games are known for another game that came out a few years earlier called Orléans, which is set in France and involves monks. These are cards you're going to use in this uh, Traveller expansion, and uh, these are basically things that could happen on your turn. So let me just get out the respective bits. I'm going to show you the quick setup, or the shorter version of the game, and uh, there is a longer variant as well. There's also a mission expansion, which I will show you because I think that's very good. So here are some cards. I'm going to leave them just here. They're just about visible. So what else do we have in play? We have these cards. These are asset cards. If you happen to do something with a traveler later on, you could do something such as preservation. You may store food in warehouse rows that were started with corn. I'll come on to that. I'll leave that face up. I won't go through the rest. So let's just check everything is visible. Yeah, excellent. That looks good. Right, what's next? We have down here some cubes. So just grabbing some of these out. Okay, and what we're doing here is these are some cubes that might be in play if you're looking to use the cart. So we'll put those off to the side for a moment. Put these bags. What I tend to do is because it does come with bags, leave a cube in here. It actually comes with loads of spare bags, more than you need. So that's in there, and we're going to deal with these ones. This is our huts. So you can choose a player colour of your choice, and I'll get onto that in a moment. But for the time being, you're chucking something in that's relevant. So I'm going to leave a card in here, and these are going to be for the hut locations. You're going to need 10 huts in play. Now, when you play with the Traveller, you actually need 11. We were playing with 11 yesterday. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The rest can go away. As an example, what do these do? They mean if you can go there, and I'll explain how you can do that in a moment, you can gain an extra coin when you score later on, and you're going to score four victory points. So I'll leave that visible. We've now got 11 on there. I'll put this back in the bag for the time being. This is probably the most complex game that we presently have. We have got over here, we've got some water. So if you look down here, we have the water tile. This is representative by money, and for some reason it's got jugs. I think it's glassware. It's the most expensive good. So for some reason, the merchant really likes his water or his jugs or something. So again, you take out the respective bits. So in addition to all the expansions and everything else this game's come with, which is everything you can get, they've also got these little capsules on them as well. There's absolutely no reason really to need them other than it feels nice in the bag. It's quite playful. Got a bit of noise. And um, yeah, they're not going to fall apart. These, these chips, you know, it's cardboard, none of these boards have worn through. In a two-player game, it tells you you need to set up seven items. If you can see down here, you might just about spot. So depending on the number of players, you're going to need certain things out. Now, 
as there's a lot of setup, I will be explaining a bit more about uh, why I like setup as two and a few other things about the review at present. And the reason why I'm doing that is because the amount of time it takes to do stuff is proportionally longer with more players. I find there's a lot of downtime in this game. I'm just gonna leave out a couple of these things just to give you an example of what could happen. Right, chuck everything else away. And as you can see, this is a lot swifter than having to count something out. In a three player, four or five, you're chucking out a few more resources. So resources are tight in this game. So you do need to think about what you want to get. It's an engine building game to a bigger or lesser extent. It's a bag building game as well. So bags are in games such as the Quacksalver von Quidlinburg, which came out actually after the first Altiplana came out. People will love this if you love llamas. It's a quite a strong alpaca themed game. This is for the Traveller expansion. You can leave them in the bag for the time being and uh, just use them when you need to. We're gonna deal with some food. Food can be important. So the theme is quite strong in this. It does seem to make a lot of sense. I'll get on to what I think of the game afterwards. But uh, at least in terms of the theme, I can tell you there is some going on. So let's leave a couple of corn here. And what we have in here is the card that says about sunny days, which is on the back. Not that those cards are in here, but what these are gonna be, these are question mark cards. So I'll leave a couple out and play. So the different ways you can play this, in a two player game, you'll take three cards, you look at them. In this case, you want to complete a row with eight, uh, to get eight money, a row full of fish. This one, um, you need to have four jugs, and this one, and you have three of those asset cards. So as you can see, that's for the Traveler expansion. Traveler expansion has the white logo, the white man on it, basically. Um, to represent a backpack or something. He's just passing through and they're trying to interact with him. I'll talk to you a little bit about interaction later on. The point being, I'm going to take one of these and give two to my opponent in a two player. And they're going to pick one. I'm going to have one of their two cards and pick one of those two. So there's something to focus on. I do like this a lot in games whereby it gives you something to work on straight away. So otherwise, you're not going to have much of a clue. So let's say I take this one. I do know that, uh, as I'll get on to it, these are harder to get, but I'll just take hold of that. Perhaps it means there's gonna be less interaction and I'll take this one too. So I'll discard this card, give them to someone else. Imagine they've got their bits. So for the time being, these can go back in the little tray it came out of. And then that one's done as well. So I'm kind of packing away as I go. Player counter, so we have uh, you need to your player counters, so I'm blue, I can't seem to find the blue uh, cubes for some reason. So I'm going to start somewhere, and I'm going to take my respective cubes. Let's say my opponent is red. The Traveller always starts here, so that goes on there. So these cards here, just as they're out, we're going to play 15 rounds. So when you play 15 rounds, there'll be three A's. Then there'll be three Bs. The reason you have more is because you can play with more if you play uh, new, more rounds in the serial, we say the fuller game. In terms of duration, just whilst I'm still setting up, I find every time I play this as a two player, it's taken about 83, about 80 odd minutes. It's about 83 minutes for some reason, it's always 83. And that's as soon as we started playing the game. Uh, setting up takes about 15 minutes, but revising yourself with the rules, especially with all the extra bits and um, it was almost an hour before we started and it was uh, again another 15 16 maybe 10 minutes to pack it away so there's a few pieces there that can go out of the way as well i'll need to show you these boards in a moment so once i've set everything up i'll move stuff out of the way we've got some what's they called we've got some corn i'm just going to chuck away again leave them in this little cart these carts you'll see also in a uh, Orleans as well. Everyone's going to take one of these. Now, whoever picks last goes first. So I am going to take, as we, as I've already shown it to you in the uh, promo video, this character here, just to show you what he does, especially as you can only use him in the Traveller, and I've got the Traveller set up here. This was the first time I played it yesterday, actually, with everything, which is all four bits, which is the mini expansion, big expansion, and uh, the promo tile. We have fish. I like going for fish in this game. Didn't go for any fish at all yesterday, funnily enough. No, no reason why. We've got some canoe cards. Well, as you can see, all the cards are face up. The only thing that you can't look through is this deck, as I recall. Everything else you can get whenever you feel like it. 
So chucking these away, we'll actually need to uh, keep a tr uh, little cart to show what's going on. So turns are very swift. That is something I do like in the game. We do have an extra alpaca as well that we bought, but it comes an alpaca. So in terms of duration, you're looking to play probably two and a half hours, maybe longer with more than two, two to two to five. People are comfortable, enjoy playing at two to five, myself and at least one other, just like the downtime. Now you can play with this alpaca figure in the Traveler expansion. For some reason though, I think this works very well. It's not broken yet, which is good. Anything else to get out? We've got out some of those. We've got this. Right, now it's time to move everything up and just show you what we'll be doing. Score pads, we'll need these as well. One of them's come off already. This is in the original, so it's been played quite a few times. And I said some of them have already come off. So they've, uh, they've gone in the bin. And this is, again has been played again a few times. So uh, as you can see, this was played uh, with five players. This was played myself um, a couple of times as a two as was this. Now, they're not double-sided, which is annoying, but there's some extra writing you can do on the back. So let me move everything out of the way and explain what these locations are, where you want to go, why you want to go there, and other things to consider. I'll need to get these out as well. It's making sure everything is visible. That works. That'll be quite handy for this thing in a second. I think we'll get this up the top. Let's move this round. So it doesn't take up a huge amount of space but I still need to show you some other bits. We're gonna have this in play. This is things we can do. We're gonna need my little counter here. We're gonna need the player boards. Everyone needs one of these. So suddenly you can see, well, actually we do need a bit of space. And uh, that is enough down the bottom there. So good grief, it's a lot bigger than I thought it was. Okay, that's there. We're gonna have our little warehouse. So that should be visible. Good, it is. The little thing here, this is a little ruler telling you about costs and things like that. Uh, let's see how much space we do have. Maybe I can move this across. To be honest, well, it's first player marker, we know to move it across. Let's move this out of the way. Let's move this down a bit. And yeah, we have something kind of out of shot, but it kind of makes sense. Right, cool. So everything's kind of visible. We also need those blue, I oh, hear the blue cubes, I found them. So. I'll explain the different locations, then I'll explain what you can be doing on your turn. In fact, this board's upside down. So there's that there, and we'll move this. I'll leave it here for the time being. So the short variant is everyone starts with five cubes in their little um, space where you can move off from. So everything is kind of visibly in shot at the minute. And round one is saying to us, um, extension costs one less minus one point. So when it's one less, it needs one fewer, to be more correct about it. So, final bits. We're sitting out these cubes here. We have tile C, we have Bs, we have more Cs. I'm not going to get them all out, but as you'll see, they have different values. We'll be going through them in order, so it makes sense just to at least get out the A's and you'll get to see what's going on. Two, three... And the reason why they are a bit uh, mungled up is because to get this all into that box, as you saw, this is the bit that had to get mashed around a bit. So we have A uh, that's down here. So off to the side, we can just have that visible. We have this now, A, A. These are things you can convert, so it's a converting mechanism. And what's handy is you can just about see on the left-hand side of the Caesar costs. These are the marketplace. We can buy something for one coin, plus whatever it is on here. So this is an additional one coin. So let me tell you about what everything's worth for the end of the game, and then you can start thinking what you want to get, when you want to start getting, and does that aid you at all? So everything goes back to kind of thing. And as you can see, lots of bags are in play, but there is enough of a setup. So, based on the starting player, so I'm taking this character, not because I'm starting, just because I'm having to take this character. I'm going to take these respective items. I'm going to leave it here. It shouldn't be there. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll move that there, and I'll move this out of the way. So, chuck those back. So, what I'm going to have on my turn, this is my area, this bit here, is I'm going to take one food. So, I'll take one food 
from the food pile, which would normally be scattered out everywhere. But in this instance, I'm just trying to be conserved some space. This will go in my little cart. So I get one of them. I get one llama. Llamas are left over here, but I'm just going to take an extra one from here. I get one piece of ore. So ore is over here. I know there's a bit more. I'll tell you what. One ore. I also get um, one opal. Opal's a strange one. I didn't use it until, I think, in the last two rounds. And I get one money. Money can be pretty tight in this game. Depends on what you want to spend it on. So this is what I start off with. Money goes off to the side. So that's my stuff. This is my area. This is what I have to play with. So at the end of the game, I'll explain that first. You're going to get the most victory points. And if you do that, you win if you happen to get the most. So at the end of the game, any cobs, any cobs of corn that you have are worth no victory points because it's kind of easy to get potentially. It's a byproduct. Uh, the same thing with coins. You happen to get coins, but this means nothing. Uh, I guess because you can't eat it. Food, bizarrely, is worth nothing because you can eat it. It's not particularly precious. It can go off. Fish, you get nothing for. I guess it goes off. You have um, the alpacas, which I guess you could say go off or wander off. Then you get stuff which does score you stuff. Well, wood, maybe timber. You have uh, minerals, so stuff over here. So uh, you can get these kind of items, which are good. You have cacao, which is worth one point as well. Then you even stuff worth two points. Now, they're not called twizzle sticks, hot dogs, or alpaca kebabs. These are scrolls, they're parchments, and they're bits of text, so they can get you two points each, or gets you two points as well. So similar to some other Euro games, you know, you're converting, you know, brick to ore or minerals and stuff like that. On to three points, cloth. So cloth, you can see, is, you know, a bit more precious, and you can get three points at the end of the game for each one of those you have. Bracelets. Bracelets, I'm calling them bracelets. You get three points if you have any of these at the end. And finally, as I mentioned, jugs are worth four points. So when I grabbed my cards, I happened to pick going for jugs and going for fish. So there's not much choice, but in this case, I'll probably be getting some fish. So imagine I'm starting. I can choose where I want to start. But what I can do is, let's say this first, I grab what's in my bag, which are three items, uh, just three items at present. And I think everyone starts off with an extra food, to be honest, but maybe that's not the case. But what I'm going to be doing is placing stuff out into my area here. Okay, so... So, in the short game variant, everyone also gets a free food. So, I've got some food already, I've got some more food. So what I do is I place out up to, in the short game, five spaces. So everything moves up onto five. Now, you do normally start up at four in the long version. And as you can see, one thing you could do is to go up from this track to try and actually get more things out per turn. More things out per turn obviously lets you do more stuff and get more points. So, on your turn, I can now chuck this stuff out. That's what I started off with. What do these things do? Well, up here, if I happen to place an alpaca and I happen to go to the alpaca space, which is here, then I will convert it into one food. So again, zero victory points, but I'll show you why food might be good. If I happen to have that, I can get a scroll. So the scroll gives me two. I can get another scroll later on to get a cloth. That's worth three. If I happen to go down here and I had two food, which I do, I will get one mineral. Now, later on, I could use that mineral to do something else, but imagine I had some more, which I do have. I could do this to get a bracelet. And as you know, those are victory points. Down here, I get a piece of wood, and which is fine. There's no other reason for wood in this area. But if you happen to get a cacao, you're going to get a food, or you can get a um, bit of cloth, or you could get uh, a jug. Now, you might think, oh, that's really good, but that's why cacao is only worth one point. Now, if you go down here, you've now got that piece of wood, say. If you happen to also get that mineral, you can start moving up this track if you get to this space. Get to this space, you'll go up the track, and if you get to enough spaces, you'll get a cob as well. So that's handling those bits. Over here, we have the harbour, which makes thematic sense. If you happen to have a fish, then a fish and a food gets you and more food. Two fish gets you a mineral, a bit of a strange one, that one you might think. And two wood, so you're getting wood over here, suddenly gives you a canoe, which kind of makes sense as well. I'll explain why you might want to get canoes in a minute. If you go over here, you can start selling stuff. But when you sell stuff, you never lose anything in this game. In this case, if you happen to spend a llama here, 
you're going to get an extra coin. And I'll explain why you might want coins. Then it goes there. And then uh, everything else to selling it. So if I happen to go up here and go and get the llama space, I go dum dum, and I'll do the action. So where do I want to start? Well, this is what I started off with. What's the most efficient stuff I could do on my turn? So I've only got three items and my llama. So the only place for llama is getting some money. So if I look at here, do I want money? Do I want to start thinking about getting some wood, some more llamas? Looking at this stuff, I do need some fish, but that's I need to spend fish. So not very much use in terms of getting fish out at the minute. I'm thinking of, uh, so if I go over here to the fishing location, I'll need to, you know, it's handy if I can be efficient whilst I'm there and convert a fish and food to get more food. But I could also be getting this. So if I go here, I could, you take, well, I only take one action per turn, then it's the other person's turn and then it's your turn. So if I went here and converted, I can't then get a card, they have their turn and then it's my turn. If I'm still here, I could do that action, but I would need two pieces of wood. So if I go there, I could get any of these cards I fancy. So I'm thinking, oh, well, this means I get a free jug. So that's handy for me based on my card. Or what I might want to do is go to something that starts my engine going. I could get some more food, some carts, which I'll explain, various things, get some cobs out. And I'm gonna get two victory points at the end of the game. So this helps you get more stuff out. Additionally, you're getting more stuff out this way as well. So I think one of the best things to do on this turn is getting a mineral. I think minerals are very strong in this game as you can use them to go to the huts, which I'll explain. You can use them to move up the track. So I'm gonna do that. I'm then gonna put this here and this here. That's the only place it can go other than there. I could leave it down here and it blocks off what I'm doing. So, so this mineral, IKA called a pebble, um, I can try and do later. In this case, I'm blocking up that space. If I happen to get two food again, I can't use it. But as you'll see, you'll start getting used to what stuff you've got in your bag and what stuff you're going to start getting again. So I'm going over here. I'm going to go, I'm going to just do that there. So where do I want to start? I'm going to start probably at the alpaca farm. And what this means is oh, I do need an extra cube to show I've got a cart. Everyone starts with one cart. I go here. I take one of these. Uh, I went the wrong place. Sorry. I'll do that. And I'll do that. Uh, no, I'll do that. So I've got enough stuff. So I go here, I spend my items and I get my uh, bit of paper. So that goes in there. My scroll's gone in. Now it's the opponent's turn. I could go here again and well, there's nothing else I can do here. There's no other cards. Now it's my turn. I can move one to three spaces. So it's one, two, three, or one, two, three. So in this instance, you can kind of reach everywhere. I want to get over to the mountain, which is over here. So one, two, three. And what I want to do here is convert those two items for a bracelet. And then I can't do anything else. It's the other person's turn. And then I could have gone to here and bought an extension for one cheaper, minimum one coin. And I didn't in this case. So that will be the end of the round once everyone's been. This gets discarded, a new thing comes into its place. And uh, let's just grab one at random. It happens to be a C, but ignore it That's in this instance. That happens. And now the first player moves across and then it all happens again. So we've got a new card that will come out. We're going to chuck everything. Uh, if there's anything in your bag, you're gonna put this on your board first and then refill your bag. And you can look at your bag any time. So look into the bag and pick out, remember in the short game, five things. So one, two, three, four, five. This tells you what you want to be doing. So you reset. Now in this case, I would like to move around more. If I move around more, I have more turns. It can be very frustrating if you can't do anything. So what you might want to do is thinking about putting a food here and you'll need a cart and it lets you spend some food to move a cart. But first we're gonna need a cart. How to get a cart, you need to spend the money and you need to go to a house. So it'd be handy to start getting some movement in play as we're getting more pieces out. So they take their turn. I think about, well, I'm gonna have to think about if I wanna get this out. So I could go here and get another bracelet, but I kinda want that cart. But uh, to get the cart, I need a coin. I need to get over to the house. Do I lose anything else? I'll probably leave this here for now. The bracelet, I've got no other use for other than selling it at the minute. And I could sell that at the same time. I could sell them both and get one coin each in this case, but you can basically do 
that is just one action to setting that thing. So I could choose to do that. So now they take their turn, they're not affecting me. I take my turn, I happen to sell this to get a bracelet. Now, as you can see, um, there's only eight bracelets in play in a two-player game. Of course, with more players, it's more, but proportionally, you're still gonna run out quite quickly, potentially. So if I'm going for that, you run the risk of not getting what you need. And sometimes you take a lesser good, such as cacao. If I've taken all the jugs, I'm gonna to have to take this, Knowing it's four points, I'm only gonna get three points for a cloth. So I've taken my turn, now they've been. I move across and I go over to, um, well, I could go to the money bags place. So go to the money place, which is somewhere else. Can't see it now, here it is. So now I can convert that and get two coins. So I take two money out of the bag and that would go over here. And again, that would end my turn. And then this is blocked up. So then you refill and go again. So, as I said, you're gonna need an extra, you put an extra cube here if you happen to pay a coin at this location and then you can start moving more, which is very handy. Um, canoe cards, I've mentioned you'll get one of these things here. Huts, if you can place two pebbles down, you're gonna draw one of these cards and this allows you to get something like um, coins, which are normally worth nothing, are worth one point. Everything else basically increases by one and you're gonna get four victory points. So go for something that maybe you have a lot of or hope to get a lot of as well. So those are huts. You additionally have something which I haven't placed out yet. And I think they're over here. These are things you're trying to work towards. So these are like uh, contracts. So in this case, uh, what you want to get is a pebble, an ore, and a cob. So what you'll do is you'll grab one of these and you'll pay a cost, which is one coin. So you go here, pay a coin uh, for a contract, and then suddenly you're gonna try and complete it. You can't get another one until one's complete. Now to complete it, you'll need to take your items. So you go back in your bag. So let's choose one that I've got some bits for. Basically it'll help sort of thin out your bag, which you may or may not want. You'll be pasting it here. So you go over here, on your turn you can pick this up and it'll go on your card. Now it's not going to come back out of here, but allows you to complete the card. If you manage to complete it completely, at the end of the game, you'll get 19 points and you'll get a cob, which moves me on to how the warehouse works. So the warehouse is all about looking to uh, get points by having loads of stuff. If you happen to take a cob and you go here, you've got to complete that row with a cob unless you have other abilities, which might be in the assets. If you happen to start it with something else, Again, you've got to stick to what it is, but what you could do is do that there, not complete that row and go somewhere else. And then finally you get onto this zone where it takes longer to complete, but you're getting a victory points. Again, it's coming out of your thing and now it's locked down here for the time being. So that's how that works. If you happen to get those multiplier cards, such as these, sorry, such as these ones, they only work on you know the loose stuff at the end of the game. They're not impacted by stuff that you have in completed contracts or on a contract. So we've talked about moving up here. You can get cobs again, which can move you out here. We've talked about everything else. And finally, we're gonna talk about this traveler board. So you can move to a location where the traveler is, where this particular one, uh, what this means is... So what you can do here is play down an item, anything you like, and suddenly you're basically mimicking where that place is, where he is. So at the end of each round, he would have moved. So he now moves, say, here, whatever it is, moves around in clockwise order. And now you can now activate what's going on here. You can interact with the traveler. Interacting with the traveler lets you do one or two things. You'll see on your board. So um, in fact, it's missing. I need to just grab it out. So whilst I'm just grabbing it out, I'll just explain something else that you can do. On your turn, uh, when you choose to refill your board, you could take something back and leave it here because it's blocked up a space here. But that means you've freed up maybe wanting to go here. So this is a little traveler board. If you happen to interact with the traveler, again, when you're setting up, you can place items here. So if I place down, let's say that and that, you could be selling stuff to the traveler. So if I'm selling one of these, it's a level two kind of item. It's more, you know, more manufactured, shall we say. Then you can get two opals, end of the game. Two opals is worth one victory point. 
and you know, a single kind of raw material is worth one victory point. Additionally, what you could do is place down an item such as, uh, say, one of these, and there'll be some items which might accumulate here. Okay, so what you could be doing as well is happening to be dropping off an item, which allows you to do one of two things. It either allows you to be gaining opals, or what you could be doing is actually drawing a card. So in this case, this is a black or basically a raw material as you take one of these cards. So I've dropped off, say, a llama as it's kind of a basic good, and it allows me to draw a card. In the future, you can make store food in your warehouse rows that weren't, that were started with corn. In this case, you can gain two coins per fish you sell at the market. So actually, you're improving your, your engine that way. So what I'm saying is that you could be um, converting something. So goods for opals, you could be converting opals to take something here. So on your turn, you could be um, taking something that another player has ditched or what's on the traveler board, which I'll get onto again in a moment. Or what you could be doing is getting rid of an item which now that gives the, op the opponent or opponents something to take. And in that instance, you can draw a card. So you can draw a card by discarding a thing. You can discard a thing to get an opal, or you could use an opal to take something from the traveler board or somebody else's um, area. So that covers everything off. Um, that is the game. You then go through and tot up your scores. So you're gonna go through like this and say, well, how many items did you have at the beginning? How many... Um, <clears throat> how many different uh, kind of level twos, level threes, level fours, your canoes, which I normally think is generally quite good, but I didn't happen to go for them yesterday. Uh, then you're going through the top and bottom points. So any additional points you had based on the plus ones for these items. Then you also go through any, the total, so I had five huts. I actually had a requirement card for my mission objective. I happened to get some points based on the contracts um, in my warehouse, I didn't have much, but I completed uh, one row. And down here, based on those missions, I had eight points. Finally, get some extra points as well, because sometimes some of these asset cards can give you abilities too. That kind of covers everything off. Um, that is the game. I'm going to now talk to you through you know, my thoughts on it as I pack it away. So I've mentioned about the downtime um, in more than two players, for me personally at least. And I said, there's only, you know, I think only one other person really has considered that to be such a negative. But um, yeah, I've only, after that first game playing it, I've only played it as a two, and it's personally the only way I play it. Um, whilst I uh, I enjoy thinking, oh, I can go here, go here, and get bits, and it is very swift per turn, or not per round necessarily, but per turn, you know, boom, boom, doing that, being hindered and only having one or two movements, and... It's not a negative, it's a positive as well. It's thinking, well, actually, where do I want to stay? I can stay there and get two actions. Thinking ahead, what things could come out and be useful. That's all very good. What I dislike, and it's not necessarily a terribly bad thing, is amongst other things, you can't tell who's winning. Uh, at least I've felt that. As other people think they have a good, better idea. But because there's no sort of score tracker, people could have loads of points in their, in their heat, so hidden cards. So that's a good and a bad thing. Some people like the fact that, you know, there's a lot of tension as to, oh, why are they doing that? And as the amount of mission cards there is, I've no idea what cards people are going for. There are cards that I could have taken to do with getting alpacas, which I really thought I was going to get tons of them, then realised I had nothing other than my start one. So having nothing other than my start card was a bit of a, <laughs> a good thing in a way, because I ended up not having to have more... Um, yeah, I would have lost points potentially going for that card. And some of the cards say it's the first to complete a certain objective. So I mentioned, uh, you know, theme and all the rest, it works. I've talked about Orléans. I personally prefer Orléans, even though I've only played it once. I just, uh, it just felt like it snowballed slightly better in a way. Because what you're going here, you are changing locations. I find there's some dryness. I'm getting a bit of a scowl from my opinion on this. Yeah, it's, I have played this about seven times now, so it's not like a I've, I've hated the game, but I sometimes still find that what, when you get playing with it, it's nice. It's nice and smooth. So, yeah, people who've played it, I haven't seen people decline its play. I personally uh, I haven't tried out the expansion for Orleon either. I don't know if that's any good. But in my opinion, it's... 
Okay, so I said there's some theme. I still find this a bit dry. And there's other games I want to talk to you about in that regard as well. But uh, as colourful and printed as it is, and I do like the symbology. It works very well. It tells you where you need to go. I like the barrack building stuff. It's just, yeah, there's a lot of stuff you could be doing. There's a lot of setup. As I said it's high complexity and, you know, I prefer, you know, not necessarily lower complexity games, but simply... I don't know. It's all personal choice, really. Again, if you like alpacas, I think that's going to sway your votes to a degree. If it was a Star Wars theme, I'm sure you'd... Uh, I know a number of people just still like a game for that respect. But with that setup and explanation, that does add to the time it takes to play. Now, as I said, a number of people have played it more than once, and I know there's some quite cool strategies. I've seen someone play their first game, and all they did, I think, was went for... And a couple of things, and they won it by quite a margin. They didn't go for any cards, and they did well. So it seems to be well balanced. Do you need the travel expansion? I do like some of the extra cards that comes with it. Sunny Days is now mixed in so much, I've no idea which are the cards specific for that one. Um, I'm just making sure I've got all the relevant boxes out. The Cacao, like I said, I went for that yesterday, and was effective. You've got some idea what people are going on if they're completing those cards. Again, the scores yesterday say 140 almost. Um, you're going to be able to consider what's worth going for. So I've got another thing left over here. Those carts, even though you think they'll take a bit of space, which I guess they do in the box, they are pretty stacked full of pieces. But there's definitely no more space for anything else. But with those chips, it does work. So I now need a box for certain bits. So these could have the boats in it. No, boats need to go with the fish, which I put somewhere. Here's the fish bag. So the boats go in the bottom. And like I said, I have like going for boats, but of course then you need to go for canoes and hope nobody else goes for the canoes. There's no broken strategy. There's no way of doing really well. It's If someone's played it before, they might feel like, meh, I'm going to go for boats. With those mission cards, hopefully it helps to just uh, thin out uh, too many people going for certain stuff. The, these exclamation mark things haven't got anything specific in it, which could have less in there potentially. I'll work on that in a moment. Uh, this actually could be very good for these cards. Okay, these go somewhere else. Those could go in there maybe. I've got the cobs, which could go in there. And uh, let me think, the cobs go in this bag. So again, how you pack the way is up to you, but we know this way works. And uh, again, randomization of boards, I'll now talk to you about some other games. Um, Crown of Mara, that's also random, and I've tried out <coughs> both town and country randomized, but also town and country combined. And watch out for all the missing pieces. Got Wang still to come. Got new subscribers this week so thank you very much for those new people and in terms of other videos i think i've now got 47 games uh, still to come that uh, haven't been recorded yet and uh, or even and 27 that haven't even opened as well got this that takes something as well uh, these still take those cards and take these ones as well Ooh. As I mentioned, there's so much stuff in this box. Again, the uh, Traveller box is about half as thick. And actually, they're giving a Sunny Days expansion, although we bought it for six euros for uh, that game. I'm going to start putting stuff in the box and start working on it. So, as I mentioned, I've left quite a lot of stuff in the box already. I'll do the cloth bags at the ends just to keep it flat. But we can put this bag here, this here. This will go in its bag, just somewhere. We'll put this at the top. We'll put these, that goes quite well. Okay, let's go to the end. I think it was quite good there. So as for this alpaca tile, what I think of it, I think it's eight out of 10 for that tile. I think it uh, has a great ability to move into certain locations. There's a similar card in um, Crown of Mara, which I like as well. And I'll put in the big stuff first. First time I've packed this away, um, I think that goes well there. Got the corner stuff. We've got another board. Oh. 
This still needs to go away. And what other stuff do we have coming out? Well, we've got some new, more stuff arriving. Still waiting for the fleet promo before I do a video for that, I think. Um, stuff in January I've mentioned, cartographers. Um, there's the Instagram stuff. So there are some pictures on Instagram if you want to see this. There's a few stages of setup. Uh, videos are now looking to frequency of getting onto it being Wednesdays in particular. I'm getting the best sort of upload speeds. And oh, also, if you happen to go to Essen, it's still in Germany. Um, you can actually stand next to Alpaca. So that's very effective on four in here. Still missing a bag. And like I said, the capsule's a nice add on. I think it does a good job. Got the tiles that can go in here. Oh, these bags need to be depressed a little bit. Put those in as well. Those of you still watching, good perseverance. I know you're looking forward to the weigh in. This has been a very effective packing way. And now we've got the alpaca, which needs to go in this bag. And there's still one to put in the scorecards. And finally, the little score pads as well. As you can see, they get scattered a bit. And setup will take marginally longer, just waiting for that to happen. So let me just take the air out of this. And as you can see, it's quite a long video now, <clears throat> 40 plus minutes. But there was an explanation going on as well and packing it away with that setup and the weighing to come in a moment. Everything's in, the lid goes on, and there it is. It's a game that you want to check out. I'll notice eight tiers of coloring. There's a lot of weight to it. 120 minutes, uh, well, in a two, it's definitely possible. It's a 12 plus game. Else, Plano, let's stand it up and see what it comes in at. And it comes in at quite a bit. So we're looking at 2140 grams. And just so you can have it visible, there it is. 2134, it's gone down a bit. So if you're looking for a game, like I said, the highest complexity that I believe is um, a current list of to be recorded, uh, it's something you want to check out. So please do support and subscribe. I look forward to bringing you new videos this week. Take care, much. Goodbye.